the problem is God. <laughs> the Kabbalah doesn't believe in God, right? Not the way most people think God is. Wait, say that again? The Kabbalah does not... Doesn't believe in God. The word G-O-D suggests for people a personality, some guy in the sky somewhere over there looking down at us. Right. And that's not what the Kabbalah describes as God, and that's not even what the Torah describes as God. The truth is, if you open up the Torah, you won't see the word God, because the Torah is written in Hebrew, and, and the word that is being translated as God is a Yud, the He, the Vav, the He. Right. The question is, what does that word really mean? Okay. Was, is, and will be. Right. But it also means Havaya, which means existence. In other words, that word is pointing to ultimate timeless existence, the source of all being. Where's the practical application for that? The mistake that people make is they think that the goal is to be spiritual, right? right. And it's not. Right? The goal, Everybody says that. Right? They think the goal is to be spiritual. Yeah. But actually, they think that we're going to take the material and spiritualize it. Right. The Kabbalah teaches that our goal is to take the spiritual and materialize it. What do you mean by that? In other words, love. Love is very spiritual. Love is very abstract. My job is to take love and turn it into a hug. I just brought this abstract love into the world with a hug. Isn't, Kindness. But isn't love a feeling? Uh, love is more than a feeling. It's also a feeling. That would be it becoming more concretized. Love is an abstract energy, power, okay? The question is, how does love become manifest in this world, okay? And it becomes manifest in the world through a thought that I think positive things about you, mm -hmm. a feeling that I start to feel inside myself, and then action where I really do something that brings that abstract power of love right here, right now. The Kabbalah teaches that, so to speak, God yearns to be present in this world. Most people think that the goal is how do I get out of this world and come to some higher world, right? And actually Judaism, Kabbalah is claiming or, or communicating that no, that's not the goal. The goal isn't how do I get out of this world and come closer to some God in the next world. But the goal is how do I bring God from the abstract realm and bring God into this world. In other words, we're like plugged in exactly. to the divine source, but in that the cord, divine self. the divine self, but in that divine, in that, our cords, there's a lot of blockages. That's like a, a and we a, want it to flow. That's right. Better. I'll give you an example. So uh, my question would be, how do you how do you remove those blockages? Ah, great, love it. Okay, the Arizo, one of the greatest Kabbalists of our history, had a way of diagnosing uh, people in terms of their illnesses. What he would do, he would ask the person that came for help to visualize the, the divine name, right? The Yud, you're familiar with Hebrew, right? Yes. Right, the Yud, the He, okay. the, the Vav, Vav, and the, the He. He. Okay? He'd have them close their eyes, all right? Should and just it? simply go ahead, you can do it. Mm -hmm. You can take off your shades, right? <laughs> you can do it. You know, you just close your eyes and you, you visualize the Yud, the He, the Vav, the He. Okay? And then he would ask, and I'll ask you, uh, what color are the letters? Are there any color? You see a color? Light. Light. Okay. White did you say or light? Light. Light. And what color is the background? Darker <laughs> than the light. Right. Is there, but are they any more than a color or are they just brighter and, and less brighter? Brighter and less brighter. Okay. Are there any letters that you're having a hard time visualizing? The last letter. The last letter. Okay. Are there any parts of letters that you're having a hard time visualizing? The, the first yud and the hay I see completely, then the, the vav and the hay go in and out. Oi, oi, oi. I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I have a lot so, of blockages. So the Arizal, based on your ability to visualize the name of God, could then tell you what it is right, that you're not doing in your life. In terms of how do we personally deal with that, mm -hmm. we can only deal with that in a general way. right? And that general way is getting in touch with what is it that you're having the most challenges in, in terms of ethical uh, and in terms of spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. For instance, our sages teach us 
that, you know, there's something called the Yetzihara, the inclination, the evil inclination. The mistake is that people think it's an evil inclination when it's not evil. It's just an inclination that encourages you to do evil, but in itself it's not evil. It's just creating the opportunity to make choices. Right. But whatever it is that that inclination most um, uh, addresses, that's what you need to be working on. In other words, if you have a person and they're really struggling with kindness, mm -hmm. that means they came into this world to reveal kindness. What divine attribute, going back to what good are you, is what you're the worst at. That's it. <laughs> but right. spiritually, morally, not in terms of like, uh, right. hey, I'd like to work on my humor, maybe I should be funnier. It's kind of counterintuitive because you think of what your positive traits are the ones that are here helping the world. I but you're saying it. it's uh, just the opposite. No, no. It, it, the, your positive traits are important. Okay, your positive traits is what you're going to do for the world. Your negative trait is what you have to do for yourself, which in turn is going to help the world. Okay, so in other words, if I've been given the ability to speak publicly, so that's something I could do to help the world. But that doesn't mean that that's the essence of my personal fixing. My personal fixing, and the greatest contribution I will bring to the world, is when I can work on the very areas that I'm most challenged in morally and spiritually. Mm. Okay. That's a great lesson. Tough lesson. <laughs>